Hello and welcome to an episode of Spatial Data Discovery. The topic for this week is sustainable authorship in using plain text with Pandoc and Markdown. So my question for you was, you know, what is sustainable authorship? What is plain text? And how does Markdown relate to sustainable authorship and communicating to the broad general public? This comes from this article by... Dennis Tennant and Grant Wythoff, and having you read through this gives you a better idea of what is plain text, what is markdown, and how they pair together to create what we call sustainable authorship. And the idea comes from this whole idea of plain text files, which you may not even realize that you're using, uh, and are what build up the HTML websites that you visit which is what we're going to be publishing our project and files on. So the first thing is, how do you create a plain text file? So a plain text file can live on your computer. Uh, if you're using Mac, you want to use TextEdit. If you're using Windows, you can use Notepad. Or if you have something like Atom installed on your computer, then you can just use Atom. So for example, on your desktop, you can come down and go to a new text document. And this we want to call something like example.md. And in Windows, file extensions in the operating system are used as a way to pair files with the appropriate app, which is why this error comes up and says, are you sure you want to change the file extension because the way that the computer is going to pair it with applications, it says unusable, but really the file contents will not change. So you can say yes. And this is a plain text file. Uh, in Atom, you can come up to your desktop, go to new file, and go to example2md. And of course, there are no questions asked in Atom about plain text files and opens directly into a, a new text editing window. So plain text files are just as they sound, plain text. So you know, what you write uh, is what you get or as it's also called, you know, what you see is what you get. And the benefits of having this as a text file is that no matter what you open this file with, it's going to look exactly the same. So example2md is a plain text file. So if we open example2, In Word, for example, what you see is what you get. If you open it in Notepad, what you see is what you get. And you could even open it in a web browser, and what you see is what you get. And that's really the idea behind sustainable authorship is that no matter what you use to open a plain text file, what you see is what you get, which means that everybody has the accessibility to open these files. And it has a long history. Plain text goes way back to the original uh, electronic typewriters that created plain text files and we can still open read write to those files today so that's the idea of this preservation into the future so when it comes to markdown if all we're doing is changing the file extension and we're not changing the file type what's what's so different about markdown if you do a, a web search for markdown one of the hits is going to be the daring fireball or it'll show up in the search history here for Wikipedia, and it says that Markdown is a lightweight markup language with plain text formatting syntax created in 2004 by John Gruber and Aaron Schwartz. So it is plain text, 
but it adds a little bit of simple formatting. So the idea about formatting, so if you use text edit as your text editor on Mac, or if you use Microsoft Word or other word editor uh, or word processor, you're adding uh, formatting to the file like paragraphs and margins and you know, uh, indentations and the, the layout of the file all of that is embedded into the file so that is a little bit more in terms of saving more information than what you see into a file so that's not what you see is what you get uh, in terms of a Word document. So if you were to create a Word document that says what you see is what you get and we save that to our desktop example 3 So example three Word doc, if we come over here and take a look at it, uh, what you see is not what you get. And as you scroll through and try to find the content that you typed, you're gonna have to scroll pretty far and you might not even see it because it's sort of hidden in here in terms of the contents. You'll have to do a search for, oh gosh, you can't even find it. So the contents are completely hidden in terms of being able to see this in a plain text editor. Or if you go to a web browser and try to open up a text doc, doc it won't even open it. It'll just try to have you save it back again. So we don't have the accessibility with some of these non plain text files. Uh, and then other non plain text files can be binary files, which can be like your images, your PDFs, um, some data files are binary files, and then those need to be decoded by software in order to be able to interpret them. So plain text is just very flexible indeed. So how do we use Markdown? Well, let's take a look at this example. So the idea behind a markdown is that it's still what you see is what you get. So simple formatting and then how we can add a little bit more flavor to a file. So one of the things you might want to format are section titles and uh, section headers. So we have the hash key at the beginning or multiple hashes and you can go and do even third level and fourth level to get as many ways of subdividing your content. Then simple paragraphs are just, they live on their own line. Uh, you can have paragraphs that are made up of multiple lines and a single return with no blank space in between them will create an entire paragraph. And then when pairing with git, remember git will track each change per line. So if you have a long sentence, then you make a change and you say, you know, when pairing with git, and you want that to be a hyphen instead of a comma, you don't want to change the entire paragraph. You may only want to mark this sentence as being changed. So by making a return carriage after each sentence, you will now allow the tracking to track individual sentence changes as opposed to a paragraph that maybe had 10, 10 sentences or something in it. And that entire paragraph then would require to be tracked as, an, as a change when maybe you just change a simple punctuation somewhere in the middle of a sentence. All right, so we have headers, we have paragraphs, and then we can also do ordered lists and unordered lists. Ordered lists, they can be one, uh, two, and three. Uh, but the nice thing about Markdown is that it does render these for us, so it will track an 
increment the numbers for us if we don't care about the numbering and just say, okay, figure it out yourself in case you come back later and say, you know, good numbering. And now I don't have to go through and change these two lines at all. I've inserted one line and the numbering will automatically get fixed for me. We could also change the ones to stars for unordered lists, dashes, or plus signs. And those would give us unordered lists. And you can tab in and say sub item one. sub-item 2, sub-item 3. Now, you don't necessarily want to mix these characters, so you can pick one and stick with it. So maybe you want to use stars. It's up to you. Some formatting, like bold and italics, will get highlighted for you if you use an IDE, like Adam, that I'm using here. Otherwise, uh, bold and italics are some simple ways of adding style without losing the readability. Remember, this is still more or less what you see is what you get. If you know that these are headers, you can easily sort of track the different levels because the hashes go indented. Here you can see paragraphs as just sort of lines of text. You can identify where are the lists by the numbers or the, or the stars. You do need blank spaces in between sections. So here's a paragraph, blank space. Here's an ordered list, blank space. Here's a title. This blank space is actually optional because headers can't be more than one line. But then here's a paragraph, blank space. And then here's a table, blank space, and then a paragraph. So this is the way in which you can structure text in plain text that is readable for anybody and that's sort of the goal behind markdown is that it is adding formatting but still not losing the ability to read this without being rendered all right so what do we mean by being rendered well this is plain text which is great you can share it it's highly compressible so you can zip it uh, you can put it on the web anyone can view it you can save it on a thumb drive and five, ten years from now, you'll still be able to open it. But what if someone said, give me this as a Word doc, give me this as an HTML? Well, in order to be able to pair this with that kind of format, we can use something called Pandoc. The way this class will be using Pandoc is through R. So R is a scripting language and interpreter, much like Python. And I'm going to be using the R markdown package in R that I can then pair with Pandoc to take a markdown file and then convert that one file to multiple different formats depending on the needs of an assignment or a project. So how does Pandoc work? Well, you can install Pandoc on your computer. If you come in, if you search for Pandoc, you'll see pandoc.org, and you can go to the install page for your operating system. So Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So it is a free and open source software that you can install on any machine. And once you have Pandoc and you have a markdown file, So my example is example one. I can do pandoc example one and make the output example one dot doc x. And we'll see that we get an example one dot doc x and it creates the style for whatever Microsoft Word has but the content is the same. And you come in here and make adjustments if needed. Or if you don't like Microsoft Docx, you could do open document text. So I have LibreOffice, and we can instantly convert it over to an open document. Or if you wanna publish this onto the web, 
you can convert it directly to an HTML. And now we have an HTML format of our plain text. And we got all of these different formats from a single input file, which means I only have to write it once and then I can run the correct conversion function to turn it into a Word doc, an ODT, or an HTML. You can also convert things to PDF if you have Mac text or um, mic text or other latex, I think, um, text live. And then you can convert it into a PDF as well. So you have the availability to convert into a number of different formats. These are just a small selection of them but this encompasses a lot of what we're working with. The big one that I care about for this class is communicating through the web. So when we look at the Pandoc version, or rather when we look at the Markdown version of this and then look at the HTML, you're gonna see that in HTML language, things are in tags. And this is how most websites, if not all, communicate content to you. So the way that formatting is applied to a web document is through uh, tags. So you have header tags. You can see as my H1, H2, H3, H4. Those are my headers. And you can see that the text falls between an opening and closing tag. So everything that falls between a tag gets that as its tag element. And then paragraphs, as I mentioned, paragraphs in HTML use P. And then we have an ordered list, and then we have an unordered list in our ordered list. And while this is readable, it's not the most friendly to see whenever you compare it to this, which you can read and not have to worry about where are the tags. And also the formatting, which you see there are IDs, that are, have come in here, there are classes, there are styles. Those are actually embedded into the tags in HTML, whereas in here, we're completely removing the formatting from having in favor of readability. So HTML, the hypertext markup language, is plain text. It is a little bit more difficult to read, which is why we are in favor of making markdown when we can pair it with Pandoc to then convert and apply the styles for us after the content is written. And that's really the kind of the powerful thing that we're using in this class for communicating, keeping content in one place and then allowing the style and formatting to happen sort of after the fact. So this is you know, a quick look at um, what is plain text? And you know, for those of you who want to see if ODT is different, ODT, oh gosh, look at that in terms of the content is no better than what we see for um, the Microsoft Word document. A PDF, oh, the PDF, I mean, there's some stuff you can read in here, but then it's, uh, where is sort of uh, anything Oh, this is even longer. Look at how long this one is. 200 lines, over 400 lines for, for just a couple sentences. So, I mean, that is why we care about plain text, and that is why we're using Markdown and Pandoc. Uh, so I hope this was helpful. If you'd like more practice with Markdown, I suggest checking out stackedit.io. It's an in-browser Markdown editor. There are other options. This is just one. When you come to the website at the top, there's a button called Start Writing. And if you click it, it will open up a new window where you're presented with Markdown on the left and the HTML rendering on the right. And you can adjust the settings if you want them to be visible or if you want to go to editing or if you just want 
to edit and not see the render on the other side. The nice thing about Stack Edit IO is that in the top right hand corner, you'll have a menu where you can synchronize your files if you wish to your Google account. But really the big one here is the cheat sheet that tells you how to apply headers, how to apply styling, how to apply lists, links, code, tables, definition lists, footnotes, abbreviations, and even math equations. And you can come over here and on the fly, things will change as you type. Uh, the only thing I have found that is different in Stack Edit than in the R Markdown is that when you hit enter and start a new line, unfortunately, it starts a new line in the rendering over here. Whereas in Markdown, I'm asking that you do create a new line for new sentences in the same paragraph. Uh, this, for whatever reason, doesn't put them all in the same paragraph. And that's something just to keep out, uh, keep an eye out for, because different Markdown renderers are going to apply different rules and styles. And that's one of the challenges behind Markdown renderers is that you know, each one does them a little bit differently. And there are some variations in what you can and can't do for what formatting will be accepted. But remember, the plain text file is always the same. It's just how you render it. So you can copy and paste any plain text file in here with Markdown syntax, and it's going to show up here. And it may look a little bit different in Stack Edit than it will whenever we render it for our website. And that's because we're using Pandoc, uh, Markdown, and R Markdown. So those, those are the syntaxes you want to look for, and we have resource links for both of those. So that's Stack Edit IO. And I will see you next time.